Out here in the Wild West, stories are told. You've got your gunslingers, desperados, and your bandits, but always in the background, you've got other movers and shakers, bankers, railway men, and government agents looking to bring progress to little towns like ours. Today, Jacobs & Co., a company made up of innovators and inventors, have called on the mayor and his assistant to talk about a possible deal that could make or break the fortunes of our home. All right, Violet. When we get to the office, let me do the talking. What do you have in mind, Olin? I don't know. Depends what Jacob and Co. have in mind. What does that mean? I've heard stories about these businessmen. They talk all nice, and once they have your signature on the papers, they bring in all kinds of workers, and a town you once knew and loved is nothing but a smoking crater. That's horrible! You don't think that's what they want to do to our little town, do you? Don't worry, Violet. I won't let them do something like that. It's not going to come to shooting, is it? Couldn't say. If and it does, though, I'll be ready. I do wish you had left your sidearms at home. Just seeing you wear them makes me nervous. Promise me you won't resort to violence, Olin? I'll do my best. That's not reassuring. Ah, Mr. Olin and Miss Violet. So glad you could make it. Coffee? No thanks, Mr. Jacobs. We're kids. Oh, quiet. Well, I must say I'm rather excited to meet with you. We at Jacobs and Company have big plans for this little town. Big plans? Indeed. We plan to build a radio tower in the town square that will transmit programs all across the country. What's a radio tower? Oh, well, it's the newest invention to come to the Wild West. By sending radio waves from these towers, people far and wide can turn on their radios, like this one, and hear all kinds of things. I don't trust him, Owen. He's talking all crazy. What's the bottom line, Mr. Jacobs? Is this some kind of trick to tear down our fine town? What? No, this radio tower will be the envy of the country. Everyone will be clamoring to hear things like the pond, jungle jam, paws and tails. There he goes again. I'll prove it to you. If you would just listen for a half an hour, I'm sure you'll understand. Okay, we'll listen. But don't even think about trying any funny business. <laughs> I'll leave being funny to the programs. Hey, kids. Here to finish setting up for the Christmas play tonight? Hi, Mr. Hugh. Yeah, Mr. Jacobs has just been getting things ready with the microphones and the speakers. And to keep us busy, he brought the radio to listen to. Sounds like he's done this before. Yeah, Mr. Jacobs has been doing drama shows and stuff with us kids for years. Ask Artie. Are you here to help set up too? Sure am, Violet. Where should we start? You'll have to ask Mr. Jacobs that one. All right. Looks like the microphones are all working. Are we ready, kids? Yeah, just waiting on you. Okay, Olin, why don't you get the doors unlocked so we can bring in the scenery from my truck? You got it. Great. Hugh and Violet, would you mind moving all of these costume racks backstage? They're probably just going to get in the way out here. All right. Do you want to walk backwards or forwards? I'll go forwards. Great. While you guys are doing that, I'll back my truck up. So, are you excited about the play next Friday, Violet? Yeah. It's gonna be fun, I guess. It's not much of a play, though. Other stories are more exciting are of jokes or plot hooks. This one just has a bunch of kids dressed in bathrobes doing what the storyteller says, and then everyone sings. Oh, I see what you mean. Christmas pageants aren't usually like normal plays. Instead of having a made-up story with made-up characters, a Christmas pageant is about real things that happened in real life. It's just a retelling of history. Yeah, about that. Is there something wrong? Well, it's not really believable. Yeah, it's not a format that's going to win anyone a Tony Award. No, I mean the whole story. The Christmas story. How could all of that happen? The angels, the kings, the night wind talking to lambs? I mean, how could kings just leave their kingdoms to go find Jesus in a cave somewhere? Who was in charge while they were gone? And who goes on a trip like that in the middle of winter? On camels? It just doesn't make sense. I think I see what's going on here. You see- You, Olin and I are going to need a little help getting the stable through the doors. Would you mind? Not at all. Hold that thought. Be right back. 
No problem. I'll just listen to the radio while I wait. Ah, there we go. With those braces, that stable is looking much more sturdy. You mean it looks more stable? Exactly. Is that all the stuff from the truck, Lionel? Yep, everything's in. Thanks for your help, Hugh. Okay, now where were we, Violet? I was talking about how I don't really believe the whole Christmas story thing, and you were going to say something about it. Wow, sounds like quite the discussion. You don't believe the Christmas story? Why not? It's just full of stuff that doesn't make sense. It's an incredible story, that's for sure. But no matter how outlandish it seems, you really have to... specifically mentioned the Three Kings and it taking place in December. Oh, that. I was about to explain that though Christmas really did happen the way that the Bible tells us it did, there are a lot of things that people have changed or added to it over the centuries that aren't exactly in the Bible. Wait, what parts? Well, we can start with the Three Kings part. In Matthew chapter 2, the Bible doesn't mention any kings bringing gifts for Jesus. Yeah, they were three wise men. We learned about them last week. Well, that's partially right. The Bible does call them wise men or magi, but it never says how many there were. Wait, what? It mentions three types of gifts, but it never says how many of them there were. There could have been two, three, or even 20. We don't know. But if the Bible doesn't say that they were kings, Why do we say that they were in the song? Good question. A lot of the things that we think are part of the Christmas story just come from tradition. Tradition? Who's he? (laughs) Tradition is when people decide to do something a certain way because it's how it's always been done or because it has a special meaning to them. Take the time of year we celebrate Christmas. Before people in Europe heard about Jesus, they would hold feasts to celebrate the longest night of the year because they knew from that point on Even though it was going to be cold, the days would get longer and spring was on its way. When these people became Christians, I expect they still wanted to have these feasts. But instead of celebrating the sunlight coming to bring life, they decided to celebrate God's son's light coming to bring life. So Jesus wasn't born on Christmas? No one really knows. I've heard many people say they know when he was born. But the truth is, God didn't tell us in his word. So. All we can do is pick a day and celebrate God's great gift. This is really weird. Now I've got to actually read the Bible and see what it really says. That's exactly what we all should do, Olin. When we add to what the Bible says, it... You know what? I think I might have a script on my phone that talks about that. I'll go see if I can use the church's printer so we can read it together. Be right back. And we can listen to the radio while we wait. And now, from the phone of Lionel Jacobs comes the fabulous drama, The Boy Who Cried King, an adapted tale from the public domain that makes a point about the Bible. Once upon a time, there was a boy. Hello, I'm Reginald, and I watch over my father's sheep all day. It was a good job, but it wasn't very exciting. I find ways to entertain myself. I use my imagination and see all kinds of things. Every evening he would come home and tell of his adventures. So, son, did you have a good day at work? You should have been there. There was a bird, right? And it was flying. Well, yeah, that's what they do. Um, yeah, did I mention it turned into a dragon? Really? Yup, and there was a nut you slayed it right there. He gave me one of the dragon's teeth as a souvenir. Then where is it? I hid it in a tree, you know, so people won't steal it. Enough tall tales, my son. Eat your dinner. Every day, the tale started off believable. I saw a lizard today. But by the end, it was too fantastic to be taken seriously. And then the lizard climbed into his spaceship and blasted a hole in the very fabric of time and space. Uh Uh-huh. Sure it did. One day, while he was out with his father's sheep, a herald rode up to Reginald. Ho there, young lad. The king sends word that he will be passing through this land, and anyone who comes to see him will be rewarded richly. Awesome! I'll tell my family! And so the boy returned home to tell of the wonderful news. Guys, the king! The king is coming! A messenger just told me about it! The king? Whoa! I've got to get ready! 
Don't listen to his wild stories. He probably just saw a horse rider who said hello. No, it's true. You've got to believe me. The king is coming. Did I mention he's bringing a lot of soldiers to wage war on the Windmill King? He's going to reward us all richly. It's true. Please believe me. Please. The moral is, though it's fine to use our imaginations, when it comes to God's word, it's very important to know and say what it teaches. If we start adding things that aren't in there, then not only could it mislead people to believe things that aren't true, but it also shows that what we say can't always be trusted. If this happens, then how can we expect others to pay attention when we try to tell them about God's love for them? Okay, Mr. Jacobs, I have a question about what we've been talking about. Okay, Violet, hopefully I can help. You have been talking pretty seriously about how we should know what the Bible really says and only believe that. Does that mean that if something isn't in the Bible, we shouldn't believe it? Good question, Violet. I can see how, by what I was saying earlier, it might seem like we can't trust anything else. But I think I should clarify. Okay. God has given us minds of our own. He helps people become scientists, archaeologists, teachers, and explorers, all of whom work hard to make discoveries every day and want to share their findings so that we can know more about this amazing world we live in. Okay, but what does this have to do with what we were talking about? Well, Olin, Simply put, the Bible doesn't have everything there is to know hidden in its pages. You won't find all the facts about bacteria or the law of gravity or how to build the best car or which mushrooms are safe to eat. These are things that God has decided to let humans discover by themselves and teach each other about. I think what Lionel meant earlier is that we need to make sure that we aren't changing what the Bible says. And if there's someone that is teaching something that goes against God's word, we need to not believe it. Thanks, Hugh. That's exactly what I was getting at. If the Bible says it, then it's true. And we don't have to add anything to make it any truer. In fact, like it says in verses like Proverbs 30, verse 6, if we do add to it, God won't be happy with us. Okay, now I have a question. Uh-oh. What's on your mind, Olin? Well, all these traditions, like Three Kings and Christmas being Jesus' real birthday, are these things that aren't in the Bible bad? Hmm. I'd say these traditions may not be totally accurate, but I don't think we have to go so far as to say they are trying to mislead anyone. Traditions are things that people use to help them understand the things God has done for them. As long as we aren't saying our traditions are more important than what the Bible actually teaches, then they are a beautiful way to remember His goodness. For instance, one of my favorite Christmas traditions is the story of the little drummer boy. The Bible doesn't say that there was a little boy that played a drum for Jesus, but the story reminds us that we all have something to give God. And when we do our best to praise him, it makes him happy. Like it says in Matthew 25, 23. So that tradition, even though it's not in the Bible, helps us remember a lesson that is in the Bible? That's right. And if you look at all of the traditions around Christmas, You'll find the most meaningful ones, like giving presents, gathering together with loved ones, and singing carols, all have something to do with the things the Bible teaches, even if they aren't in the Christmas story exactly. Hmm. Speaking of Christmas story and traditions, Tabitha just texted me and said she's on her way. Is there anything else that needs to be done around here before she arrives? Oh, right. I guess we should finish up. I can get the camel set up if you give me a hand. All right. You want the one hump? or two first. The Bactrian, please. Two humps coming right up. Wow, that was a lot of stuff we talked about this time. Yeah, but at least it made sense this time. Still, I think I'm gonna have a talk with my parents about it. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Are you done listening to the radio? Yeah, you can turn it off. (laughs) 